right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, baby. <laughs> greatest show. I'm gonna say that every single episode. I just feel like that personally. Personally. Um Hit that like, hit that share, let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you some mother hater. Hit that subscribe button too. So a lot of y'all ain't been subscribing, man. It's like 70% of y'all watching and you ain't subscribed yet. What's going on? Don't be scared. It's Disres just a button. Disrespectful. Right? It's crazy, bro. Wild disrespect. Like that, man. Wild disrespect. It don't cost you no money. Man. Ah, Mac, what up? It's a little okay. Uh, any demos in the trash this week? A couple. Yeah? <laughs> a couple. Why do you never name those people? Why would I do that? Why not? Because I'd be directing you to trash. You, you, know that. you don't understand the, the motivation that could give somebody. I'm not here to motivate you. Trash. I'm not here. I'm going to do something get crazy now. Yeah, well, get motivated when you realize that I'll get you back. <laughs> That's crazy. That's wild. That's wild. That's what it is. Sean Bigger, man of God. We got some ladies in the building. Kitty, I want to see what's up. Well, okay. How to yeah, yeah, pick? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Should I blow it up? No. Yeah. You chilling? Yeah. All right. Cool. Don. Don Cannon's wife is in. Oh. She's she's gonna give me some more beats. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Love the show. And I got my man Dice Peso up in here. He just pulled up. You chilling? But he'll probably be on the next episode talking. You know, yeah, love, love. <laughs> uh, I'm I got some for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's back in the building. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but y'all know him as Splat, Splat Murder. Uh huh. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is, it is. Chant, what up? Oh, uh, everything is well, man. Happy to be free. Oh, you, you feeling godly today? Oh, uh, yeah. Have to. Every, every have day. to. Young angel. I heard, you know, there was a special guest here. So, you know, I follow a lot of this man's verbiage and things of that nature. So I was like, you know, I'm big into Yoruba and, and things of that nature. And mm -hmm. who has my head is Obatala. So mm -hmm. his color is white. So I feel like it was, it'd be good to represent it on this day of this legendary interview that's about to take place. Oh, that's, that's so. Yeah. You could have informed the rest of us. Nah. We could have drew the camera colors too, bro. You just, <laughs> you ain't here, just that's chilling. Yeah, like, that's, that's crazy. You faked this out. You had a whole crazy. black shirt chilling like yeah. Two seconds ago. Yeah, facts. <laughs> this coat Two came out of nowhere. No one saw it. Just <laughs> the pants popped through the whole thing. Just, the shoes uh, is nah, different. Nah, nah, he nah, went in his ass. He had a pump. Just threw the joint on. Um, When it comes to consciousness, you know, um, I remember Jay-Z saying, um, truthfully, I want to rap like Talib Kweli. Common sense. Common sense. That was, I did yeah, five he said mil. both. He said, he said both. both. But common sense was that line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I sold five mil and I ain't yeah, doing like common sense. sense. But so I, I think that for all of us deep down, there's a, there's a part of us that wants to tap into our, our conscious sides a lot more. Is this a guy? And it leads us to our better selves. And this person has been trying to do that for the community, for, for society. He's been raising a vibration all over the country because they've been on tour. Um, high level conversations. We're about to find out what that's really like in person. We got 19 keys on. Man, I'm blessed to be here, man. Appreciate you. Yes. Yeah. The legendary show, man. It's good. Yeah. Hey, brother, you do with godly, my brother. I appreciate Thank you. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I Everybody. appreciate that. As, as, you as well. Thank you, you as well. I appreciate right. it. You shining. So, so, like, you listen to Kendrick Lamar and Common Sense all day? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I do like the last Kendrick album. Yeah. It, it grew on me. You right. understand me? I think the one about fathers is my favorite. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, nah, I don't be. You know, shout out to Common, bro. I don't right. listen to Common. So, who do you listen to? Uh, I think, my, you know, I listen to my brothers. You know, uh, Jack Heller Classic, mm -hmm. I'm Pooh. Mm -hmm. You know, they in my rotation heavy. Mm -hmm. um, who I just said we listened to from Houston? Um, Sauce I've been listening to Sauce Walker Sauce lately. Walker. Ooh, oh, Sauce Walker. Shout out yeah, to my, my guy, guy, Sauce Walker. I've been Walker. listening to Sauce yeah. Walker lately. That's of course. the homie. Nipsey that's... Hustle. Yeah. I do like the, I do like the Nas Nipsey. album. Crazy. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. with the Kings hit boy beats. Yeah. yeah. All three of them, but this last one I really like. Okay, you understand exactly. me? But you know, I listen to whatever. 
Yeah, sauce is different. Yeah, you listening to sauce yeah. is kind of suspect though. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Why? Because he be on his pimp vibes, and you know. Yeah, you know I mean, he's been sick though. But he, he, it's, it's, it's one of those things. We was always taught settle on the best part. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And so, it's one of those things. Though it's like I was listening to my bro, Doctor Wesley. He was giving a breakdown about binaural beats. You understand mm -hmm. me? And how they can uh, hypnotize the mind, right? Mm -hmm. To where you know part of your brain fall asleep while the other one is suggesting something. And he was saying like basically, he said he listened to Young Dolph and Future. But he was saying like, you know, like a person that uh, started on their journey of eating healthy, the last thing you gave up from McDonald's was the fries. And he say, me saying I listen to like certain rap music is me saying the last thing I'm giving up no, is the fries. fries. Mm -hmm. You understand right. me? Right. And so that's how it is with me. Like, I don't listen to it consistently because mm -hmm. I don't want their voice in my head because they don't talk about shit. Right. But when I'm working out, specifically what that music do is it put me in that heightened sense. You right. understand me? To where you going at it. So it's like you want power, you want control, you want to take over. So that particular music actually works to heighten up the atmosphere while I'm in the gym. Right. But it don't really make sense, right? When I'm on a move and I'm trying to concentrate and I'm trying to focus, right? right? Because it can make you more susceptible to being triggered, right? right. You can be less emotionally resilient. Right. Mm -hmm. You catch somebody and they not at that state where they emotionally resilient, you say something, they pop off. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because they don't have control over their emotions. And a lot of that has to do with the music. Right. And so, what you eat and other factors, but you know, music is one of those powerful hypnotizing factors. It, it, it all ties in. Absolutely. So we, do you listen to the, like the, the healing tones and yeah, I love binaural the, the beats, man, because all. you know you go from like beta, theta, you go from delta, gamma, right? And gamma is like heightened, like right. where you extra focus. Like in the morning time, they got what they call um Ultra-radian cycle. So our body goes through different cycles throughout the day. Right. Right. And so we got like 90 minute peace cycles where we can just focus. Mm -hmm. Right. So like for everybody it's different. Well, so let's say you wake up like six in the morning, you get you some sun, right? You in your circadian rhythm, which is your 24 hour clock rhythm. Probably about two, three hours after you wake up, your brain is at peak performance where you can start doing business. You can start doing certain tasks. Right. You got about 90 minutes of that flow time. Then you go through a 30 minute rest period. Right. right, and you do that about four times throughout the day. Right. You understand me? So for me, I don't want to waste those periods. So if I'm listening to music, that's throwing off my cycle, right? So we only know about women having cycles. We don't realize that for me, everything is a cycle, right? right? Like, you know, everybody just celebrated New Year's, but the real New Year's happened in the spring cycle. Right, when right? everything when is new. We yeah. still going through the death cycle of winter. Right. You understand a, me? So I look Gregorian at everything calendar. as a cycle. That's what we're following. Yeah, the Gregorian calendar yeah. that came from the Pope. Right. You understand me in the papal bull system and all that. But in Judaism, they also recognize it as the new year is in spring. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, and I mean, look, Chinese people got their own New Year's, right? It did open people have their own calendar. It's based on the moon, right? Ours is based on the sun. Right. And so we off rhythm, especially in wintertime. This ain't black people's time. You understand me? Like mm -hmm. our time is more with summer. That's where you see things heighten. Right. I was explaining like it'd be better. Imagine if we had Black History Month in June. It'd be yeah, really turned up there. Yeah, but yeah. they know not to put it right at the time where we had, you know, height and potency, the right. melanin is getting the right amount of energy and sun mm -hmm. and the vibration. They don't want that because then we're in a proper cycle, mm -hmm. you know? So I look at everything as a cycle and sometimes it ain't time for me to listen to hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a lot of people who can do good with just fasting for music for a minute, getting their shit focused, picking your peers a time when you do listen to it where it actually works. You understand mm -hmm. me? But like when I'm going to sleep, I got the binaural beats on. You know, I let that flow. So in that state where you at in gamma and you at like 432 hertz or whatever, that's when you more like ain't nothing bothering me right now. Right. I'm right. good. Ain't nothing can bother me. So you may do something to me that normally, you know, if I'm in a low vibration, I might jump on it, you know. But if I'm on my, you know, heightened sense of self right now, it don't even bother me. I'm going to keep going with it. All right. Are there any uh, hip hop artists who who rap on those type of tones that you recognize? Um, uh, I don't know the exact cadence, but if you like, if you listen to, you know, uh, I think Kendrick Lamar, I think his last album probably has some of those in there. Yeah. You understand me? And most people, like the engineers, they doing it intentionally, right? Mm -hmm. Because they got to program it. So like, if it's drill music, they not putting you know calmness in there. Right. right, like they want you to be heightened, they want you to be out of control. If it's more so music with like melodies, right? People that use a lot of samples from you know back in the day, those are the, the music you're gonna listen to that's gonna have you more on that flow and that wave. Mm. 
That's just like what we was. That's yeah. like what we was talking about the other day with the um R and B music. Yeah. How do you don't hear R&B music? Like, yeah. Uh, there was a time where the that was no everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere was calm. They don't want us to love no more. Yeah. Nah, man. Nah, we got to go dig deep for what Tank said. Yeah. Tank had that quote. He said, the, the, the fear isn't our anger. The fear is in our love. When we love Absolutely. each other, that's when they're afraid. When we warm with each other, yeah. they're doing their job. You discombobulate. Right? That's, the, that's the only yeah. solution to it all. I mean, but that, that type of, it's self-love. You understand me? So like, you know, self-love is a reflection of all love. A person really loves themselves, they start demonstrating that in their life. So I'm gonna eat better. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna think better. The things that I ingest, but why? Because I love myself, I wanna live longer. Mm -hmm. But we got a death culture, so it's backwards. Right. So everything we do gets us speeding up our death. Fast sex, fast death, right? Driving fast, everything we do. Wait, wait, you said fast sex? Well, I just mean in a sense like <laughs> promiscuity, right? Like, oh, okay. like I, if you I, think I, about culture of hip hop, right? It's mm -hmm. like whole culture, pimp culture, right? None of it is about like protecting life so that you can have longevity. You understand me? Everything is fast. It's all microwave, right? Yeah. So if it's not life in it, it's death in it. There's no in between it, right? If it's not pro-black, it's anti-black. There's no real in between in it. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So like people be talking to me like, bro, you pro-black. By saying that I'm pro-black, are you saying you're not? If you're saying you're not, you're telling me you're anti-black. Right. You understand yeah. me? So people try to make it seem like I'm doing something special. No, what I do is normal. I just love myself and I love my people. I don't think that's special. I just grew up like this. Right. You feel me? If you grew up in a black Muslim household in Oakland, California, like I did, then that's just normal. I don't think I'm doing something special. But people look at it as special because what they're doing is anti. Right. You understand me? And that's normalized. So when you see somebody talking pro-black behavior, you feel me? They're really, you know, pulling their own card. Like, damn, man, he making me see myself right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He talking about black people and anything that I do, especially nowadays, everybody in capitalism. Everybody want to make some money. I get it. Mm -hmm. So most of the things you do, you would throw your people away for a dollar. Right. That's mm -hmm. just the reality. So it, does that have the same effect as success? Like when you're, 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 you're speaking these uh, pro-black things and, and doing good for yourself and all that? No, nah, you got to know how to move in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I grew up seeing black men with power and money, though. Right? In Oakland, California, you had your black Muslim bakery. You had Dr. Bay over there. He had his own schools, security, uh, firms. He had his own bakeries. So from a young age, I seen black men in motorcades driving down the street. Like, they ran Oakland. Right? right? You can ask anybody from Oakland, right? That's who ran Oakland. When we, when we was younger, right, we used to go through all of the different hoods of Oakland, hop out, and we would drill as a demonstration. Right? We hopping on Acorn, Ghost Town. We hopping out, Ice City, we everywhere with When you say drill, what you mean? Uh, like the militant drill, you mm -hmm. understand me? Like you seen the movie Malcolm X, Malcolm X pull up into the front of the police station, yeah, mm -hmm. right? That's exactly how it was. So we'd go there just to demonstrate and then recruit some of the young men there just to show them a difference, like you could be a part of this. Because they had a program, basically, if you came off the streets, you came out of jail, they give you a job, but they clean you up, you mm -hmm. understand me? So you got to come to the Sunday meetings, you got to come to the Monday night meetings. You got to come to the Saturday, right? And you got to go through this regiment, like redeeming yourself. You got to learn the knowledge, but then you get put on a job. Right. Now, everybody don't make it through, but I done seen men literally come in there as drunkards, as like crackheads, and then like get knowledge and get invigorated and like have life in them and have some light mm -hmm. in them. So this is like, from, so like when I say this is normal to me, like this is just how I grew up from a child till now. Right. You understand me? So I don't really... Like people specialize it, but for me, it's like, I got seven brothers and sisters. The way I talk to the world is how I've been talking to my family. You know, so that's easy for me to do. I got mm -hmm. footage as a child, you know, standing on stage, right? Talking about Elijah Muhammad's program. So like, if I'm doing it now as a grown man, I've been practicing my whole my life. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So can, can we get into that upbringing? Because um, I know most kids that grow up in a, a religious or, yeah. or strict household, they rebel. Mm -hmm. What what was your rebellion like? So I was born in St. Louis, right? Right at two, I moved to Oakland. Um, my older brother was the one who kind of carried me through the streets more. You mm -hmm. understand me? So, you know, I think it's funny, man. I think rebellion is necessary, right? Because that's how you truly know yourself. That's how you truly know what you believe, right? Right. If you just follow along with something, that ain't your true beliefs. It ain't it ain't nothing there that sticks you to it. You got to kind of go through that war. So for me, getting into the streets, being in Oakland, back and forth, and in St. Louis, you know, you lose your way a bit, right? Mm -hmm. Especially, we weren't poor, but we didn't have money type of situation, mm -hmm. right? Right. 
So, you know, you get out there and hustle. Older brother taught me the game, right? So I'm out there, I'm selling weed, I'm selling drugs, I'm moving in the streets, how everybody else is moving, but I still have knowledge. What age was this? This was probably from my teenage years. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So like from, I went to a black Muslim private school when I was younger, but ever since, I think since the start of middle school, I went to a different school every year right. up until college. I went to one year of college. Public school? Uh, yeah, all okay. public schools. Yeah. So that's kind of when the path started to, you know, uh, uh, venture off a little bit. The household, mm -hmm. my mother and father not together, right? I'm staying with my father, then other times I'm staying with moms. So that's when you just make your own way. Right. And my older brother, he was in the streets, but at the same time, he a Muslim. You understand me? So that dichotomy uh, of, of having consciousness, but being in the streets always existed. That's just always been my duality. Right. You understand me? And so I had, I think I probably had maybe like five, six petty cases before I was 19 years old. I caught a felony mm -hmm. with my older brother and my pops. And um, it was over assault. Somebody snitched saying I beat somebody up. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a not guilty. So the court said I didn't do it. Right. Right. And so I don't have no felonies <laughs> on my record. That was real sinister. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Yeah. I got it. You know, <laughs> the court said I didn't do it, but you know. No, I, it's not guilty, right? I went through that whole process, but that was actually key in my development, though, because during that time, I remember uh, when I got locked up, I was reading this book. It was like a storybook. Mm -hmm. And in that book, you know, uh, you know, if you ever get locked up and you read something, like you really jump into the story, you can imagine the characters. It's like a movie. Yeah. But then when I was done reading that book, you know, I'm still locked up and I'm in jail and I'm no longer closer to my freedom. Right. So when I did get extradited to California, because I was in Ohio, I happened to be doing some jobs. Mm -hmm. I get extradited to uh, California. My older brother, my older brother gave me a list of books to read. These books was like. Books where I can actually learn the system, learn some psychology, right? Learn how the system works. So I'm reading these books. I start studying a little bit of law, right? Just enough to like understand my own case, right? Do my own juror selection, things of that nature. And I remember that moment when it was like, you know, Jabril Muhammad, not guilty. And the feeling that I got, I felt invigorated, but I felt alive because I know that this case wouldn't have been won if I didn't do my own knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And then mm -hmm. when you do the research, you find out how many young men just plead out on cases because they don't have resources, they don't have the knowledge. Right. Right. Not because they're guilty. Right. And so mm -hmm. I haven't read a storybook since. I only read and learn things that's applicable to my freedom. You understand mm -hmm. me? And applicable things that I can actually utilize in real life. Right. Right. So I think in a very logical and rational manner in that capacity. Right. So now I want to be able to help assist other people that I know ain't. They might not have somebody to throw that key to them. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So that's what it is about, you know, giving them 19 keys, you know, giving the keys to those who got them rusty locked minds, who in situations that they just don't have access to themselves. And if they did, they'd be able to free themselves. So your name didn't come mm -hmm. from your hustling days? Not at all. <laughs> no, I, I, not at all. Name came from Maswad Muhammad, actually. Right. So mm -hmm. I was inspired by a quote of Maswad Muhammad. And he said, there's 17 million original people, there's two million Indians. This is in time in the 1930s. And he said that represents the 19 million rusty locks. Mm -hmm. And he said there's 19 million well-oiled keys to unlocking the rusty lock mines. And those keys, in my interpretation, represent knowledge of self, enlightenment, right? Different things that, you know, for people had, they can never be oppressed again, right? In the darkness. So I kind of like internalized that, you know, as a persona and a representation of like, I could be that key. Right. For my right. people, for my right. family. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've took it on that ever since. And then I kind of went deeper into the study of the number 19. And, you know, it, it means something even deeper to me now. Mm. What That's, does it mean? Let me ask you a question. What does math mean? What's the acronym? It's the acronym. Me achieving true happiness. Me achieving true happiness. What what made you uh Yeah, y'all didn't see that coming, huh? Nobody, yeah, I ain't even nobody that. knew that. I didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah, messed your whole head up. Like, oh what? Nah, he's, he's conscious he's, from the beginning. He wow, said a piece of No, that's powerful. Yeah. So what made you choose it though? Um, you know, math was uh it, it, it was like the a powerful thing for me when I was mm. you know what I mean? Like there was no getting around it. Everything was math. Yeah. So I, I took that on, I, you know, of course the acronym came after I chose the name. Yeah. Okay. But it gave it a meaning that was going to lead me in a direction. Right. Right. And see that, that's how it is with, you know, the number nine, well, 19 keys period, you know, um, when I first took it on, it had that quote attached to it. 
But as I started to develop, I started diving deeper into understanding like that number 19 on a five night number, that one through nine, that represents masculine feminine, mm -hmm. right? That represents uh, um, birth. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan at the Million Man March, he opened up his speech talking about the secrets of the number 19. You understand me? And he was saying when that one is next to the nine, it represents something to be uncovered. And he went on giving the mathematics and a breakdown about how the Masons, right, had the presidential statues that add up to the number 19 and the different presidents. And he was saying that the secret of America is the black body. You understand mm -hmm. me? And like, when you really think about it, the only thing that has made America as powerful as it is to this date is the black body, right? Their right. control over the resource of you and I, right. which is God. You understand me? And so I don't even remember what the original question was, but you know, that's my thought process, like synchronicity, right? Like you're a Taurus, right? Yes. So, you know, you think in a logical, rational, mathematical manner. You understand me? Like I'm ambiverted. I can be introverted or extroverted. I need to be by myself to hear my thoughts. And so the, the conversation that I communicate to people publicly is a conversation I have to myself privately, right? So, but without that, and I'm stuck in social environments, most people don't know what they truly think because they're constantly influenced by everybody else. Right. Right. So anytime something happens, bro, what you think about this? Because they don't know how to think. Mm. Thinking is a deliberate action, right? Right. It, it's actually a skill. Mm -hmm. To actually know how to critically think, how to come up with more than one solution to a problem, how to be high level. Right. Most people are low level, right? They, they're, they're concerned with the details. They don't think in visions. They don't think in big pictures. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So like my whole entire vision right now is getting people on that high level journey. I didn't see men create businesses and armies and I didn't see that fail and fall because of ego. Everybody think they the one. Everybody think that they the chosen one. No, I feel like it's more got to be decentralized. Mm -hmm. The tools that you give to the people. Those are the things that allow them to develop themselves. Right. You understand me? Like, I couldn't go back to Oakland and try to start a movement and try to come up after all the things that's been there. I'm reading the book Revolutionary Suicide by Huey P. Newton. Mm. And the way he described Oakland is exactly how Oakland still is. Mm. And the way he described his childhood sounds like mine. Mm. You understand me? So, like, me trying to jump into a Huey P. Newton shoes, obviously, he did that already. Mm -hmm. Right. So like what we doing right now with gaining success is showing a new archetype. You understand me? Like you can have the knowledge. You can do righteous capitalism. You understand me? You can create businesses that have a social good and make profit. Right. Why you can't do both? The problem is people do it without integrity. Mm -hmm. Right. A, a, a person <coughs> will fuck over their brother. Right. Because they ain't got no morals and no character. That's a character flaw. Well, but some people, I think to a certain extent, some people think that that's the way to be once you you know it, it's business everybody has this it's business it's not personal and i got a shout out uh la russell he he said that's bullshit yeah he was like yo if, it, if i'm feeding my family with this it is personal it is personal so you know but it's, right? it's personal to him yeah well the way you do it business became personal to me after that the, the way you do business him, represents yeah. your character mm -hmm. too right mm -hmm. like you can't disassociate your character from your shrewd business practices mm -hmm. you can say well I do evil shit in business, but I'm a good man. How? That's still you. That's part of your deeds at life. You understand me? When you balance mm -hmm. them on them scales, when you say who you are. So you can't disassociate what you do for business and life. Business is activity of life. So it's taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So everything is business. Mm -hmm. Right? Any business, anything that we do in business. Like, and profit is just your percentage of winnings. You understand me? And so in life, we always doing business through every activity that we go through. Right. And when we win, and we making profit. We making gains in life. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So I think we just take the European standards of business. And when we think about who's at the top, we think the white man. And so we focus on like a sociopathic aspect of doing business. Right. Mm -hmm. Not care about nobody for the sake of profit. But at the same time, when you say everything that we do is doing business, mm -hmm. isn't that sociopathic? No, nah, it's just your activities. Right? Like a man is... is, is like if I have a friend, he's my friend, uh -huh. but he served me no purpose. Yeah. Should I keep that friend? Because everything is transactional. Nah. Would he really be Usefulness determines value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would he really be a friend right. if he served you no purpose? Nah. Like not even making you laugh or making you feel better or like holding you down. Like, is he even a friend? Then? Right. But then they call that sociopath. I, just I don't think like that's sociopath. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think so. Huh. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody in my life got to have a value. You understand me? Like there's a value, a system attached to anything. Like. Imagine you got an army and you got men that don't serve a purpose. Why are they there? Right. No, I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. And friendship should be reciprocal. I, I didn't, you understand me? I didn't see success till I started picking my friends. Yeah. I, I used to let people pick me. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Once I started picking them for specific reasons, and I started to see a better light. If you got a vision, it's, it's even easier. Right. Because you know who distracted you and who had traction. You understand me? So, like, somebody asked me this question earlier. I'm like, look at the word distraction. It's distraction. Right. So you're not gaining traction talking to this person or indulging in this thing. I'm going to the club. It's a distraction. Why? Because it's not attached to my vision. Right. It's that simple. I'm talking to this person. They're not gaining. I'm getting no value from this. Not emotional, not spiritual, not financial, right? Nothing from this. Right. That's mm -hmm. distraction. You understand me? Like, the traction comes from I'm talking to somebody that giving me, we, we, we building with each other. We right. going on knowledge. It's going somewhere. Yeah it's, yeah. it's it's a build. It's progress. Right. That's why I call my high level conversations. I don't interview nobody. I just converse with them. We just build. Right. Right. Like I did uh, a conversation with Dame and they said it's probably the calmest they seen Dame talk because people don't build with them. You know, like hmm. I study psychology. So, you know, you can be a nonviolent, you can be a violent communicator. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, we prone to violent communication. We aggressive with everything that we say. We either go in defense mode or offense. Yeah. We don't know how to just build well, on top of things. Most women are like that. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, I, I shots, think shots, we got yeah, that's, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. Shots. Yeah. Right. But you know, men, men, we think in a very lo logical, rational function. The women are like the ocean, man. You know, you can't control the ocean. Yeah. Right? But the ocean is like waves of emotion and energy. So you got to learn how to move with the ocean. Right. I don't care who you are. You can be the most killer, gangster, brilliant, biggest man in the world. Ain't nothing you can do against that ocean. That's a fact. And that's how women are. Yeah. So you look at marriage as a business also? Well, you know, it can be looked at in many different ways, but marriage is a is a, con a legal contract. You understand me? And y'all are engaging in a partnership, hmm. right? And so that is a business. But isn't every relationship like that transactional? Absolutely. Now they don't have to be completely transactional, but not transactional in the sense of uh, you know, physical money or financial right, like that, right. but just emotion. Absolutely. Like you said, reciprocation. Reciprocation. Right? So you have right. to have something to offer. I have to have some type of value yeah. in order for us to interact, or yeah. else you're a distraction. That's the part I think people miss is like, like when you think about business, you think about or relationships. Let's just say relationships. Period. Like the emotional structure in that relationship. I can have somebody that's a confidant. You understand me, or a mentor, or a mm -hmm. coach. Or a person that I call that helped me alleviate the issues, like they take the stress off. That's a value, mm -hmm. right? It ain't got to be transactional in the sense like you're not making me no money, so I can't talk to you. No, That's absolutely. what becomes sociopathic. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, so when I, when I say transactional, it's more so like you're sitting here giving us wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. From your perspective, right? And that wisdom is helping us learn things from a different perspective, right? Exactly. That we might not have held. So now in return, there's something being given back yes sir right whether it's us listening whether it's taking us right. taking the key of it and going out and exercising it yes sir so i feel like in every relationship that's established whether it's you were bigger mecca math the brothers back here whoever there's something that i offer also in return right and sometimes you know I mean? it can be gratitude absolutely you know saying thank you you can do something for somebody and they can rob you by just not saying thank you yeah. You know, you could have been doing it straight from your heart. Just because they didn't have that gratitude, they didn't give the energy back. Right. I didn't want no money back from you, but I wanted some gratitude. Thank you. So what, what, you understand do you, me? what do you gain? What, what's in it for you? Because that's, that's a lot of people's question nine times out of ten when somebody is presenting something in this light. What's in it for you? Why are you doing this? I get to fulfill my purpose. Like what gives me drive? Like I do this. I've been doing it when I wasn't getting paid for it. So right. I'm getting paid for it as a bonus on right. top of it. Right. Right. Like. When I first got hired for my first speaking job, it was because it was these kids at this college, at Chabot College. They seen me talking about my journey. I had a store in Oakland, California. I just fired my boss, started me a store. And they seen me just talking about the iterations of my mindset and design process, right? And so they wanted me to come speak to the young black brotherhood that they had over there. Right. And so like, but the whole point was I was already doing it, mm -hmm. right? Like I got my start like, you know, we were speaking at rallies in Oakland. I wasn't getting paid for that. You mm -hmm. understand? First time I was on Revolt because they was covering it. You understand me? Like, there wasn't no money involved. Right. Like, there's no money involved in just being a black Muslim. <laughs> it's the <laughs> yeah. hardest thing, actually. Right. So I choose the hardest. That's the thing about it. It's like, people focus on the outcome, right, instead of the process. The process, my process is way harder because the world is against me. You understand me? I don't flow in traction with the world. Right. right, high level conversations. People didn't think it was gonna work. We said, "Who want to hear that?" 
Mm. No, you just don't have a creative mind on how to put it together, right? It's production, it's quality, right? If I know cats my whole life that spit consciousness, they have created a shirt and say peace God on there, but it's ugly, right? And they mm. expect you to wear it and support it just because it says <laughs> peace, peace God. God. Right. But they didn't put, they didn't study fashion, they didn't study style, design, quality, right? right? They didn't get a to great make it appealing. distributor, none of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, but the devil, he put all that work into it. You understand me? When he want to make boys in the hood colors, right? They put millions of dollars behind it, right? Right, but then you can do a lecture against it, and you know it's it's, it's ragtag. Mm. So it's like mm. if the devil is investing in trying to steal your soul, then God got to be invested into maintaining it. So you're saying a, a a conscious rapper could take over the game. He just need the budget. Hey, look at look at Cole and look at Kendrick. I yeah. think they already did it. Yeah. <laughs> look at Cole. I mean, look at Kendrick videos. Cole. Budgets mm -hmm. is heavy on those. Yeah, Who he's working fact. with is cold, but he delivering that message, and you don't even realize it because it's so artistic, though. Mm -hmm. You know, right? He put a he put a he got a bust down crown on his head. That's a big budget. You understand me? But he getting his point across, right? right? And so it's like, I believe that you know, if you will call yourself God, you should demonstrate at the highest level. Like you can't be a god if you're not creative, right? Mm -hmm. Like we supposed to have ideas and thoughts. That's the one thing that the white man seeing after to create. He's seen us not just that, you know, the uh uh you know the the fecundity of the mind, like your ability to have multiple spirals and get a lot of women pregnant and you well endowed. It was mentally well endowed. Like, damn, look at what they built over here. Look at the libraries that they have, look at how they figured out geometry, look how the Dogon people figure out the stars. They was like, man, this shit is crazy. We gotta figure that out. Right. So they stole those systems, destroyed it, make them forget it, subjugate them, and then became the masters. Mm. So you start worshiping yourself in the form of another man because they made you forget who you were. Mm. You understand mm. me? And so, but a black man that's dead, right, is one that don't have ideas, right? He can't take no thoughts out of his head and bring them in reality. Mm. How you gonna prove you a man if you can't do that? Mm. First within, then without. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what he do. He said, I'm the man of this world. Look, I own everything. I'm the man in this world. Look, y'all complain about everything I do. I'm not complaining about y'all conspiracy theories because y'all not conspiring about nothing. You understand me? So for me, it's like I already know that they're going to be active every single day at war against me. But what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. what, what, are the, what are the main things that you see uh, that are influencing people in a negative way? I would say, number one, culture right and so it's not even just like black culture but society's culture today like when we look at the effeminization of the black man the masculation of the black woman if you throw them off balance they ain't never gonna work together yeah they gonna never work together because yeah, i don't know if y'all noticed this but uh the representation of the black man in television right now is usually someone who's timid and non-threat that's a fact mm. However, if you look at sports, it's ridiculous because, you know, we're, we're giants, we're, we're the champions, we're, yeah. we're the guys that is putting up the high scores right. and physically we, we're capable of doing things that you don't see too many other people doing. Mm -hmm. If you read between the lines, mm -hmm. then you look at television, it's like, what's going on here? Right. Why isn't Meanwhile, this matching up? The right. image of the black woman on television is bossy, boisterous. Wow. Right. Intimidating, uh, scary, music too, uncooperative, toxic. music yeah. too. Yeah, and and which is backwards because at one point we were raising them, women, black women were raising the master's children. Absolutely, because of their discipline, because of of the guidance that they had, and it's all switched. Right, and and, and we got along that whole entire time. It's like, you know, you got slavery. That's, we got five hundred years of black men and women sticking together. Right. It's very recent that we start having these rips. Yeah. Right. And so what, how they do it? You're not just a black woman. You're part of the women's movement. Right. So this is for women. Right. right. So all of a sudden women became equal. It's no longer black men and women. Civil rights It's women rights. Whatever black niggas got going on over there, that's on them. Right. You understand me? Right. Let's forget about the past on how they got here. Right. Because we was fighting together this whole like imagine you fighting with somebody in a war. You got your woman. Y'all fighting wars for 500 years. And then one day, she's like, well, this ain't no longer my war. I'm a woman. They want to give me some rights. You understand me? What the fuck you be? I've been fighting with you the whole time. 
Like, we've been going to war. Why you think I ain't got no money? <laughs> <laughs> we've been going to war. Why you think right. I just got out of prison? We've been going to war. Why you think the statistics the way that they are? Right. People act like black men were just sitting on their ass for the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. We've been going to war, but we've been losing battles. You understand me? The war ain't over. But when you look at the outcome of the war, you look at the side effects of it, right? But you're not looking at the history of it. You're looking at the side effects like this shit just started. This is how men always been. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, you go back, we was building towns. We had 60 plus, 70 plus towns. It's been stolen from us. They didn't threw crack at us. They didn't threw uh, uh, the prison complex at us. They didn't threw everything they can possibly throw at us. And we still fighting to be men. Right. You understand I me? Mean, we ain't gave up. It's just now we a generation that's living in the side effects of the root problem, which is the system. So again, what, what are the main things that you see? on a daily basis that's given a, a terrible influence to our people. Entertainment, media, you, the way just you- Just say love and hip hop, bro. No, it, ain't just, it ain't just <laughs> love and hip hop. Man. It's love and hip hop. It's, it's the yeah. lack of love in hip hop. You know what I'm talking about? about that. That's the issue. Yeah. You know, because that shit started from colors. That shit started from, you understand me, boys in the hood. Mm. You know, like, <clears throat> there wasn't no representation of, like, black, masculine, Muslim men in there. Mm. That's when they started making it corny to be conscious or smart. So now you don't want to be that, right? Like, I'm not about to be smart and let nobody know that, you know, I like math. Like, nah, like, Cash is making mm -hmm. fun of that. Right. But, you know, they ain't making fun of a, a, a blood who kills somebody. Right. If I kill somebody, I'm cool. Yeah. You understand me? But if I'm smart, I'm corny. If I come home from jail, everybody's celebrating. If exactly. I come home from college, nobody gives a shit. Like, All of it starts with the media I'm programming. Keep this right money to my but, but at the same time, it starts from that media programming is normalizing us not having family households. Right. Because y'all had a brother on here that was talking about fathers not being in the house. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, a dress. father. Shout out to Dress from Black Chief. A father is so important because a father is a mountain, right? So. When you think about your father, that's the mountain you have to conquer in life, right? It gives you strength to conquer that mountain. Some people may never do it. Some people go to the middle of the mountain. Some people get to the top. They plant a flag. They've surpassed their father. A father's right. job is not to make their son like them. It's to make it better. Right. But when you have an absent father, that mountain becomes small, smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes your father can do something. You don't look at him the same. Mm -hmm. that, father, that, that mountain becomes a hill. There's distance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Your father can be dead to you. That mountain becomes a rock. Then it get broken down into dust. It don't feel nothing from it. Now mm -hmm. you can't gain nothing from it. Now right. you're looking for that in the world because that's that strength you need. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So without those mountains being in people's lives, they don't know how to gain and get that. So they look for it everywhere else. Right. You understand me? And everywhere else, most of the time it's somewhere toxic. You understand me? And so this is why you, know, you have an imbalanced society because it's a lack of masculine men in society. So this is the world that we get to live in now. What would the world be like if there wasn't masculine men in the world? This is where we see the world going. Mm -hmm. So when did they start demonizing masculine, masculinity, in your opinion? I right. think this started, um, right off the there's a lot of different movements, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, if you go to music, right? Because you had the 60s was a more militant, powerful movement, right? They had heroin in the 60s, but people had black identity and consciousness. Mm -hmm. So they brought in, the 70s was a drug movement, right? Mm -hmm. Give them psychedelics, keep them high, they not gonna focus, mm -hmm. right? Then you had the 80s, the revolution came back around, right? You got the Black Panthers, right? Kill them off, crack cocaine coming out from Oakland throughout all that movement, mm -hmm. killed them off. After that, we go into the 90s, hyper-masculinity. Right, because before they started to destroy divine masculinity or just regular masculinity, they mm -hmm. made it hyper. So right. now, instead of us fighting the system, we fight each other. Yeah. They go from Everybody's fuck the tough. police to fuck that nigga. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so now, instead of we gods, no, nah, we niggas. Instead of uh, uh, we brothers, no, nah, we 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 is Pac and Biggie. Right. You understand me? And so after Pac well, and Biggie, yeah, yeah, and the hyper masculinity of the 90s, the 2000s come around, and that's when the real feminine gender really got pushed in. Mm. Because guess what? The greatest tool is the internet, mm. right? Because now they can push that into right all of the households, right? And then it started to become hyperlized when everybody got a phone. Now you can't even control the media, right? You got social media. Mm. They realized, I learned a long time ago, anything that the devil can use as a tool for power, he will. 
TV came about, he said, oh, they gonna sit there for hours on the day and just listen. Man, they put in subliminal messaging. Right. Hollywood, we're not just about to have a society of millions and millions of people watching TV, right? Without the government coming, stepping in and say, let's put our messages on there and how we want society to go forward. Right. Same thing with social media. So that to me, it's, it's not just one period because they've been trying to effeminate, right? The culture, mm -hmm. they've been doing it for a long time to try to subdue that masculine entity because masculine men want power. That molecule of testosterone that makes us want control and power, right? So what do you have to do? They said over the last 40 years, there's been a 1% decline of testosterone in men every year. So it comes through the food, comes through the water, comes through the program. Young male don't want to be men. They don't. They say being a protector, provider, producer, leader, they say, oh, that shit sounds too hard. They don't want to be a man. Why? Because the association while everybody was talking about toxic masculinity, they were saying it's toxic to be a man. That was the message to the young males. Yeah. That was the mm -hmm. message to young girls. Like, a man is toxic. Not just, you know, a, a person that's toxic with flawed character traits. A, being a man is toxic. Mm -hmm. When masculinity is the typical traits of a man. Right? And then... The cold part about it is women picked up all of the toxic traits. So, and justified by saying that y'all did it. Well, well, that's not, two wrongs never made a right. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so we was always combating, even, you know, there's always been a conscious movement against, you know, the degradation in hip hop. So it only makes sense if we start seeing women do it, there's a movement against y'all as well. People, somebody was telling me like, well, when men was doing, nobody was saying them. Like, yes, they were. The yeah. president was against them. <laughs> yeah, right, there was right. whole political movements against them. Mm -hmm. Right. So the moment you start seeing women do it, it only makes sense that there's a movement against it. Mm -hmm. And so in today, it's becoming normalized in the style of, well, this is freedom. Ain't no freedom. You just out of control. You don't have no discipline. Reckless. Yeah. Reckless. That ain't freedom. Yeah. So speaking of discipline, what are what are your daily habits? that you feel like the, the listeners can pick up and start to see a change in their life? What I've been trying to do lately, travel a lot so my habits get thrown off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to worry about habits because I don't, I don't believe right now in making goals. I believe in making habits. If you right. make the habits, you meet the goal, right? right? It's process, not outcome, right. right? So I wanted to have a habit of going to the gym, right? So I've been doing that consistently every day. There's like, let's say for men specifically, women too, because 53% of America are obese, probably way more than that. But like, when I wake up in the morning, I want to give me some sun. Best thing you can do for yourself, early hours, low sun, low uh, 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 radiation sun, you step out there, you sun gaze a little bit. That's going to connect that circadian rhythm. That's going to have your mind flowing. You understand right. me? You're more resilient throughout the day. You're more focused throughout the day. When you say sun gaze, do you look directly at the sun? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, but it, at particular hours, not peak hours. So once it's hitting around like eight, nine, ten, that particular sun has a stronger radiation. Yeah. You understand me? So before it gets to that, that particular sunlight is gonna be the sunlight that is uh entraining your circadian rhythm. Right. Right? I was listening to his neuroscientists who giving a breakdown on how, you know, you don't realize that the eyes are part of the brain. It's the part of the brain that borges out first. Right. So getting that sun, that's the only way you can get light onto the brain is by actually gazing it, right? And so now that information is going to the brain and it's retraining the process saying that this is the time of day, right, that the body should function properly. Yeah. So, you know, first thing in the morning, get you some of that. Of course, we already know the time till don't turn on the phone. Now, I do it sometimes too, mm -hmm. right? But on the days that I don't do it, I'm more focused. I'm in flow. Right. You understand me? Like, I'd rather you go get you a quick workout, do some squats, do some push-ups, read some, turn on some binary beats. Yeah. Write down what you want that day to be. Speak an affirmation like, this is about to be an amazing day. I'm a God, right? Like, because why? You at a state of high suggestibility when you first wake up, yep. right? You at that low beta. You just got up. You're not at that peak yet. So when you're Picking telling yourself phone. about that day, that's what you're programming into you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You make up your bed. Like, I got all this actually written in my book. So, you know, plug. Um, plug. <laughs> 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 no, but... You know, like these are like, just think about like what habits, you know, that you believe will start a day that'll make you focus. Well, you I'll tell you, me? from my perspective, uh, the habits to change my life. Not touching my phone for the first half an hour mm -hmm. when I wake up. Yeah. 
having a, a guidance, like controlling the guidance of the day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you pick up that phone and somebody sent you a text and you like, this mother yeah. yeah, and you, you know what I mean? And it just ruined your whole day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So first half an hour, I ain't touching my phone. I don't yeah. care how many times Champ is calling me. I'm not touching the phone. <laughs> I'm not touching the phone, yeah. right? Uh, I started refilling my subconscious with with positive messages. Yeah. Um, vision boards, uh, affirmations, like you said. Yeah. Right now, things like, okay, if you, you wanted to be a millionaire, you write, I am a millionaire. Mm -hmm. You say that in the morning. And believe that. Get outside, get the sun. Yeah. You know, these, these were things that I picked up. So when you're talking to me, I'm like, wow, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I started doing that. Right. And that's how we got here. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to develop the discipline? Man, discipline is a lifelong journey. Yeah, you understand me? That's the way, like, the way I, I, I talk about discipline is when you become a disciple of something. Okay. Right? So, like, let's say, you know, if you want to change a particular aspect of your life. Now, you can make, you can make somebody, you can become a disciple of something. Maybe they got the whole 360, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's somebody, let's say it's podcasting. Mm hmm why do you get discipline in podcasting? You can become a disciple of somebody that's already good at it, right? right. And you start taking on their habits. So when you're not doing that, you know when you're falling off. Right. But now I'm not being a good disciple, right? And mm -hmm. so for me, discipline is about being a good disciple of something. And so I got to think about, you know, it depends on what my vision is. Mm -hmm. Like every single day, I got to do something towards that vision. For me, it don't have to be a military stern type regiment, mm -hmm. right? right? I have things over my day. I have things over my years. You understand me? So... Let's say I got a I got a brand. So in the next few days, I got to design something for it. So I have to get the focus and the discipline to design for this. I'm cutting out everything else. I'm not, don't call me right now. I'm not going to answer. That's mm -hmm. part of my discipline. Right. You understand me? Because I know that a good designer will just focus in single tasks until they get this done. Right? So right. how do I know I'm disciplined is if I'm doing something progressively step by step towards that goal. Right. People always say, where you get started? You get started with where you don't know. Or you get started with what you do know, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's never, it should never be a point where you don't know what to do next because mm -hmm. that just means you need to learn. Right. You understand me? That's a gap in knowledge, which means you can't take the next step until you learn. And then once you learn, you do. You feel me? So discipline is, it, for me, is that journey of being a disciple of what I want to become. Mm -hmm. You understand me? On a daily basis. So ain't nobody harder on me than me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it ain't a comment you go put out there. It ain't like my shadow self is what I check daily. Because mm -hmm. I got to go home, look at myself, and be proud of the man in the mirror. That's a fact. Right? The world can, keys is this, that, and the third. None of that matters to me when I get home. And I'm standing in that mirror, and that's who I am, by myself. Nobody else is there. Mm -hmm. And if I don't feel that same way, and I feel about myself, that the world feel about me, or better, because it really don't matter what the world feels. But if you hear somebody saying something, and it's a disconnect, that's fake. That feels yeah. like a lot of weight on a person. It feels like mean? a lot of feels like a lot of weight on you. I, I hear... I hear a very regimented life, which I'm not mad at, but it following your purpose, being this regimented, being this disciplined, constantly being focused. If I'm on the outside looking in, it feels like a lot of work. This is one of the reasons why I asked you, what's in it for you? Like, where, where do you get the satisfaction of living such a regimented, disciplined life? Success. That, well, yeah, I, I mean, ask. that's why I say purpose. Like, what else I'm gonna do in life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what, what that's the for? way I look at it. Like, what else I'm gonna do? Right. Like, mm -hmm. I don't believe in retirement. Like, life is meant. It's, it's 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 like time is motion. You know, a man don't do nothing with his time unless he make moves. Yeah, mm -hmm. you understand me? Like, you sit there in that chair all day and you don't move. What you been doing all day? Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. What you been doing with your time? Nothing. Nothing. What are you training so, your body to do? Yeah. Nothing. When I leave this earth, I want people to look at my moves and my motion. Right, because I happen to be the type of person that wants a legacy. Everybody don't. Right. So that's my personality type. That's my character. I actually do want to be remembered for the works that I've done. I want to outlive my body and my flesh. My spirit has to work when I'm gone. So that's part of the purpose. That's part absolutely. Of your purpose. That's what gives me drive. So I think my question would come from the standpoint of someone who has not yet recognized what their purpose is. Mm -hmm. Right. Looking yeah. at you, yeah. it would seem alien because you because you have such a right. goal right. and it's such a clear goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you're gunning for it like you're going 100 miles an hour towards it. If you don't have that, this all just looks. Like, Damn, what the fuck? When do you relax? Right, right. right. So yeah. getting to your purpose mm -hmm. for someone who wasn't born into such a, you know, you you almost had a cheat code. 
being born where you were to who you were, raised by Muslims, raised in this society. You have a, you know what I'm saying? You've been seeing this your whole life. It's a little easier to get to your purpose in that. Yeah, in, but he's, that not, he's not like the standard Muslim. Like right, you would, like, no, no, you would think so, right? right? But that's, that's a funny point you make. I just left Oakland. 99% of people that grew up like me ain't doing nothing what I'm doing whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. You understand me? Like, I believe that it's harder because of that. You know, it's like, when I think about the like the the work that it takes mm -hmm. to be great, everybody want to be Michael Jordan. Everybody want to be Kobe. Right. right. Everybody don't want that for them life, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody is meant to make it to whatever degree, right, that they meant to make it to in their potential. Mm -hmm. It's your mind. Right, your awareness that you can be high level, right? It's your potential, your ability to bring out those skills, and then it's the transformation, it's the process of actually going through it. Right. Once I become aware of my own potential, I have to develop my mind to transform to that. That's the way my mind works. Okay. <laughs> Somebody else that's trying to, I don't believe in that whole idea of finding purpose. You realize your purpose through work. That's right. part of my next you know that was part of my next question. So it's, it's a work ethic. There's so many people that don't have no work ethic. But there's a little piece that I feel like is missing from that is kind of kind of chasing not chasing but realizing your dreams and following that path you find your purpose along the way yeah through the work because your, your dreams are going to give you something to, to aspire to right and as you but create see, those habits to get to it i don't know about that you kind of find you don't think so no i agree with you but mm -hmm. i know a lot of which is where i was going with the, the last part of the question mm -hmm. how do you how would someone discover what their purpose is. I know a lot of artists who are doing the sexy jobs because it's the sexy job, mm. but it's not what they're good at. Right. It's not it's not part of what it's not part of their God given gift. Right. I know a dude who does long math in his head, long division, long like it it, it like this. He wants to rap. Right. He's not that great at rapping, but that's the sexy job. So he feels like that's his purpose because he's happy on stage. But his God given gift is math. But you can't tell him that. You think, so how would someone discover what their purpose is? How do you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing? The, for me, the formula mm. of purpose is simple. It's drive plus passion. Okay. You understand me? What, what, what do you have a drive for? What do you have a passion for? What mm. are you good at? What do you like to do? What will you do for free? Yeah. You understand okay. me? Okay, good question. Function meets purpose, right? So like, once you find out what you're good at, that's your function. Mm -hmm. That's what that skill is designed to do. That's your purpose. You get a remote control, what is the purpose of it? To control the TV, mm -hmm. right? Why? Because that's its function. That's what it does. So, you know, if, if you study yourself, because I don't believe in generalization, I believe in customization. When you study yourself, you start to know who you are. That's why Unblage Muhammad said knowledge yourself was key, mm -hmm. right? So what's your personality type? What's your intelligence type? What are the skills? What is the way that you learn? What are the things that make you happy? What gives you the most focus and flow? Right? Mm -hmm. All of that is letting you know what you need to do and who you are. Yeah. It's because we went through this railroad education system and everybody thought that they were supposed to pick a couple of boxes for, you know, uh, degrees and careers mm -hmm. that they've been sidelined for who they really are no. the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand right. me? Mm -hmm. Social media gave people an outlet to really discover themselves, right? That kid in class that was told that he got ADHD and can't focus because the curriculum didn't match any of his purpose and his mm -hmm. function and his drive, he had no passion towards it. He wasn't right. stupid. Right. He didn't want to learn it, right? <laughs> exactly. right? He didn't want to be Period. a slave to born. the system. right? So then you give him the opportunity, put the camera in front of him, he's funny as hell. That makes him feel good. That makes him happy. He want to do this. He That's getting it. paid for it. He Boom. feels better about it. it. He learned those skills. That's he getting it. even happier. He going to do this for life. That's it right there. And I want to I add to that, right? Because when I was incarcerated, I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. Mm. I had no idea. I said, yo, this is the last time I want to be in prison. I don't want to come back here, but I don't have a plan. I don't know what I'm going to execute when I walk out of here. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, me having that thought process saying, I don't want to come back. I want to be free. I want to get out as soon as possible. That thought, that intention mm -hmm. led to something opening. I never thought in my mind five years ago, oh, I'm going to start a magazine while I'm in prison. Mm. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. but but because I had that intention, I had that that thought, that spirit inside of me, like, yo, I need to do something to not come back. Right. The thoughts started coming. I started seeing things around me that was missing. I said, oh, dudes don't have access to the internet. This doesn't have this. This doesn't have that. What if we can provide that? 
So and I provide it for you inside here. Right. You solve the issue. You right. understand what I'm saying? But the thing is, is like the intention was there first. The intention was, yo, I don't want to come back here. What can I do? The intention, then, intention coupled with the confidence. Right. That you can do something. Right. But that was after going through mistake after mistake and that whole learning curve right. of the power that I have and the power I don't have. I don't have the physical power to move around and do what I want to do, mm. but I have the mental power to do it. Right. I can get on the phone and call Mav. I can call 19 Keys, say, yo, bro, I got this idea. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. It's just something that's ruminating in my mind. How right. should I go about this? Yo, why don't you do this? Yo, matter of fact, I got my man over here. And then dots start connecting. Right. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, it's just moving. The process starts. Right. Yeah, that works and with, the feeling. That works with like minds. You might call yeah. the wrong person and they'd be like, no, man, and that, but that was part of the drive, though. That. that was part of yeah. the drive because right. a lot of the brothers in my environment, and, and you know, while I was incarcerated, was like, "Nah, fuck out of here, man. That shit ain't gonna work." Right. Right. And right. I'm like, "Word or watch this." Right. Watch this. That, that's grit. I mean, you you got yeah. that resilience. Yeah. Everybody ain't got that because that can be a test. Some people dreams get killed because others' opinions, and some right. people don't give a damn about those opinions. It wasn't yours mm -hmm. in the first place. Nobody right. has. Nobody has to see your vision through but you. Nobody can see your vision but you. You can try to put it in other people's heads, but nobody go carry it to turn, mm -hmm. right? Same mm -hmm. thing with a baby. Only one woman can carry that to turn. That's the person who has the baby. Mm -hmm. For a man, his idea is his baby. That's mm -hmm. his vision. It ain't your job to carry it to turn. It's my job to go through the pain, to go through the sickness, to go through whatever it is, bring it to birth, <coughs> take care of it. That's mine. That's what take care of me, mm -hmm. right? But. I just want to add one caveat to that as well. Like if you if you focus on service, because you talked about creating a solution, mm -hmm. the man who serves the world is the richest man, right? Look at Elon Musk, right? Look at look at Amazon, Jeff Bezos. They created services that serve millions of people, people right. right? And they became the richest men, right? The mm -hmm. owner of Louis Vuitton, he served the culture, right? So when you focus on creating and designing life, think about how can I serve. You understand me? Most mm -hmm. people, they focus on outcome and they want to be served. You mm -hmm. understand? They want to be rich. They want everybody to take pictures of them and love them. They want to be served. They don't want to get no service. The sexy jobs. Right. Yeah. Doing but, the sexy jobs. But I want to add to, I think some people just don't, they don't listen to themselves anymore. Mm -hmm. They've been discouraged too much. Completely agree. And they, you know, they, they'll have an idea. I, get, I got this three second rule, right? And it ain't about food touching the floor. <laughs> I'll ask you a question. Yeah. And I'll tell you to answer it as fast as possible because that's the honest answer. Mm. The first thing that's going to pop into your mind is honesty. Like if you did a crime, somebody asks you, yo, did you shoot that guy? The first thing that's going to come to your head is, yeah, I did, but you can't say it. So you start thinking of another mm -hmm. answer. So that honest answer, I'll ask for the honest, I'll ask you three questions. Like if I asked you, uh, what's your shoe size? Quick. Um, What's your favorite color? What do you want to do with your life? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's honest. Yeah. She just has to figure out the way to, you know what I mean? But I'll, I'll, you know, kind of drill that into people like to just listen to yourself. What's the honest answer? My father yeah. used to call that following your first mom. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't talk yourself out of it. Follow your first mom. You say that all the time. Right. What was the first thing you was going to do? Well, I was going to do this, but then I started thinking that. That might not work because blah 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 blah. And I used to think I was I used to think that I was fleshing it out. I used to think I was troubleshooting. He was like, no. follow your first mind. What was what did your first mind tell you to do? Right. That was the this shit is, thing. The right? shit is sad. That part out. The yeah. shit is sad because you look at you start to do things, right? You have people that look at you and be like, Oh, he's he's uh, you know, he's not gonna make it, you know, well, she's not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Um, they ain't gonna add up to nothing because of whatever you did in your past, mm -hmm. right? And then as you start to progress and achieve certain levels of success, you start looking at them like, you ain't doing shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are you talking about? You know what right. I mean? So with that, with that, it's like some people don't understand their purpose, obviously, but they don't understand that they're just going by algorithm. They're just moving according to the trends, to what's happening around them. They're heavily influenced by everything outside of them. Right. And it's supposed to be first within, then without. Right. Not with, not out, and then within. I find too many people are focused on being comfortable. Yeah, and yeah. I think rocking the boat makes you uncomfortable. Facts. But that uncomfortable space is where you grow. 
Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. it's just like working Absolutely. out. It isn't, it isn't until your, your arms are shaking, right? right? Can't that muscle breathe. is going to rip, <laughs> and the next day it's going to rebuild and it's going to be bigger than it was before. Which is why right. you can't or stronger take than it was before. From people who are, you can't listen to people who have been living a comfortable life. No disrespect. Right. But I've had people try and give me advice, and we call them OGs, but all you did was stay alive, bro. Like, right. you, you, you didn't take any chances, you didn't take any risks, you, didn't, you never got out here and like, bet on yourself and all you did was stay alive you just lived a long time right you just lived but you've been living a super quiet life and god bless you mm -hmm. i hope you live a long time but my destiny was never that that was never in the car for me that's a quiet scary. long life was never it was never that's in the car that's, I comfort, think that's, that's comfort a, corrupt yeah that's, you know what saying? that's, that's a the most dangerous to place me. to be mm -hmm. like if, if, the, if things get too routine i, I start to get jittery yeah like, i'm not I'm not doing something I'm supposed yeah. to be doing. Yeah. Comfortable. Like, but see, yeah. see the way we talk about it, there's certain people that I know. There's there's certain rare personality type, right? Hmm. Certain people on the planet Earth, maybe two percent, four percent, five percent, right? Think a certain way. Unfortunately, those people are the ones who usually achieve like fame and success. I only say unfortunately because the ninety nine percent watch them and think they're supposed to be that way. Right. And we're wrong, mm -hmm. right? And that's not you. Right. They're in their position because that's what they want. They want to live in that uncomfort, right? Mm -hmm. And you killing yourself because you wish you had what they had, but that's not its not even really what you want. want right. You just see what they have and wish you had it. That's right. exactly what You understand what I'm me? About. So for me, it's kind of letting people know, like, I am who I am because that's how I am, right? Like, I, I was blessed to have the perspective to go through all that I went through and still have my mind, mm -hmm. right? I don't look like what I went through, but also... I may have a very rare personality type. I may have different character traits that's customized to me that you don't have. Right. But you want to be like me, not knowing that that's not for you. Right. So you have to learn who you are and figure out what works for you. Because being comfortable for you, that may be your life. Mm -hmm. There was people that was kings or people that were farmers. Right. right? People that's engineers, people that's scientists, mm -hmm. people that are barbers. Right. Each one of those people can find their genius and happiness in what they do. Mm -hmm. Right. But society makes certain things of a hierarchy than others, mm. especially when you live in capitalism, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. now this person, they not a visionary, this person is. This person automatically gonna be able to make more money, mm -hmm. right? right? This person could be smarter, they an engineer, right? This person don't know nothing about engineer, but he a psychologist, he understand people, articulate. Now this person ought to make more money because smart people go work for them. Mm -hmm. Does that make that person less by any degree? No, no that person gifts. Skills and talents make a different way because of the way that the world is. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we generalize instead of customize it, we start comparing other people that don't even fit who we are. Right. So that's the world we live in the envy. Everybody is envious of what everybody has. I want that. You don't even need it. That didn't even go make you happy if you got it. Hey, you, you don't know what comes with it. Yeah, you don't know what comes with it. Word. Yeah. <laughs> you call it a gift, but in a lot of times it <laughs> I just got into this debate. He's like, yo, you, you got to get... No, brother. Like, this is a curse. If you had to do what I'm doing, you'd probably throw yourself out the yeah. window. Like, like how you just asked me about the responsibility that comes along with this. Like, everybody couldn't handle it. I see what people can handle. Thanks. And I'm like, bro, if you had to have my problems, it'll kill you quicker. <laughs> yeah. You understand me? Right. Like, you already depressed and, like, having stress over your problems. Right. You don't want what I got because it comes with that... And you're not prepared for that. It comes with a lot more. Yes. That. Like, that's the whole, be careful what you wish for. It's like you talk about working out. You mm -hmm. want to be big, you have to go through those days where sometimes mm -hmm. you in the gym, I don't even feel like working out, mm -hmm. but I got to go through it. That's right. the process of pain. I right. literally have to rip my body together and, and eat protein, bring it back, go on the days I feel lazy, be consistent. I got to go through all of the ups and downs. I want a million dollars. Damn, that means I got to go through all of the days I want to quit and still keep going. Right. I got to go through the days I'm sick. I got to go through bad partnerships. I got to go through failed relationships. I got to go through all of this, but I don't realize I asked for it. Right. I was like, shit, you asked for it. What, what you thought it didn't come with this? Yeah, this is the way to it. I come with that. <laughs> I've been um, saying this for to, to get something that, you, that you've never had, you got to do something you've never done before. Exactly. I think That's people, surprising. you know, that just needs to click. Success doesn't come to the comfortable, bro. It mm -hmm. never, it never has. That's never been a part of the deal. Right. What, whatever you want, this is the. It's like you, we, we when we got into it over rappers, mm -hmm. and I was talking about how rappers want success, but you don't want to do 
this, 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 this. Right. Bro, it's like asking him to get a pizza and saying, I don't want cheese and sauce. Well, it's mm-hmm. not a pizza then. <laughs> That's not a pizza. <laughs> That's what, I'll tell the vegans that, though. The vegans believe it's still a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Could be vegan cheese. That's all I'm saying. I'm about to admit you, man. <laughs> yeah. right. I heard you say, uh, I heard you speak about capitalism twice. Right, yeah. so you're familiar with Marxism, yeah. Right, so uh, the lumping proletariat, the proletariat, the bourgeoisie, how the lumping proletariat is at the bottom of the scale. This is according to West, well, European culture first, and they they they, they carried over into Western culture, right? And in Western culture, the lumping proletariat is just like the bottom of the barrel mm-hmm. class. You know what right. I'm saying? The people that's walking the street, begging for money, things of that nature. The proletariat is the working class people right that work at the macy's at all these jobs in order to help the institution more richer right. and then the bourgeoisie is just who controls all the capital right so a lot of times people in trying to understand a purpose not knowing that that aspect of classism mm-hmm. they'll work a job making somebody else rich mm-hmm. making the bourgeoisie richer making the institution more valuable instead of essentially like focusing on themselves, going through the hurt, going through all of this, this whole process of pain, of loss, of disappointment in order right. to make themselves richer. Right. You know what I'm you, saying? You gotta be crazy to go through it. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Cause it don't make sense. Cause they, people create systems. You can just work for me. I will manage you. I'll pay you outright. I'll do everything for you. Mm-hmm. If you that makes you happy, you, you ain't gotta do none of this. Yeah. You ain't gotta worry about how we go keep the lights your on. Place. You just yeah. work. Mm-hmm. That makes some people happy because they know that they can do that. They can maintain it. Right. Now, but we got the problem is, is that there's no certainty in jobs. Right. So we got AI coming, stealing jobs, people getting laid off. You understand me? The degrees that people went and fought for and got educated towards ain't worth nothing. And people are no longer hiring on degrees. Right. So now people are, like society, especially at the COVID, is going through a whole reconstruction period. Right. Well, like everything is being destroyed. Gender roles, religion, all of it is being destroyed. Problem is, is that the people that's destroying things weren't as smart as the people who built it in the first place. Mm. So they don't really know what to put in place, but they feel free, mm. right? It's like a slave getting his freedom, but he don't know what to do next. Mm. Right. You understand me? So it's I like go. some of them return back to the plantation. <laughs> like oh, they're like, I can't feed job? myself out here. <laughs> so that's why a lot of people they break away for a second and right back on a chain gang. Mm-hmm. And then there's other people, you know, they just it, it don't matter. Like it, there's some people that they not going for liberty where I can do some things. I won't discover true freedom. I don't want to know what it's like to be fearless, uninhibited, to wake up every day and choose what I want to do, not what I have to do. Hmm. Right. Those are people that will not be settled at all. And a lot of them, like you, you find brilliant people, right? Like in the, in the terms of mental health, right? You find a lot of brilliant men who sometimes were savants in life. Then you may see them talking to themselves in the street by the time they're 30 or 40. Mm. You understand me? You know, society kills genius and brilliance. That's rebellious. That's Mm -hmm. masculine. Because society is not made for you to rule. Like, if you have a spirit, imagine if a king comes back and he's born in the hood, right? Now, he remembered his past like, I'm a king. Y'all got to treat me like such. And society, like, that ain't how this shit yeah, built. Right. <laughs> right? He gonna find out fast, like, everybody is against him. Brother, you is cocky, you arrogant, right? Yeah. Like, Obnoxious, loud. even if a genius come back, what, it, could, what, it could be a war what, general, no matter who the, it is. That's how black men like are. People mm. like that. Um, starts with an M. What's the word, man? Damn, it got mad quiet. None of y'all know the word. You so. just said it. You know how many words start with an M? You know what, what was the context? Um, uh, just just people who feel like this they they're supposed to have more than this. Mm. That sounds like entitlement. Yeah. Nah, it's but not that's not the one you mean. Nah. But they they pre- they pretty much make you feel like you're crazy for wanting more. Mm. That's crazy. I'm not sure. Not malicious. It, it is malicious. It's going to come back to me next episode. <laughs> so stay tuned. We'll be back. <laughs> you go get that word <laughs> next episode. But um, I want everybody out there to, to realize, we, you know, we spoke about the workout thing, and how you got to be dedicated to the regiment to, to change your body. Your mind is like a muscle. You got to do the same thing. You have to rip yourself out of the old way that you was thinking mm-hmm. to change mm-hmm. your life. Mm-hmm. You actually have to 
redesign the pathways in your mind. It's like a, a, a grassy field, 100 people walk this way, it, it becomes a path where you can see like the dirt and it's like an open space. So everyone that sees that path, oh, I'm gonna walk this way. Your brain has like millions of those. Right. And there's a path that you've been taking that's natural to you, but it's not gonna get you where you need to go. So you gotta walk in another direction enough times to create a better path, a, a more prevalent path that you're gonna continue to go to as a habit from then on. Facts. 21 days to create a new habit. 21 That's days. That's what it takes. Figure out what well, you, you know, do. Well, you know, I always say- It's more than that. It's, I, well, I, 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 like, I understand generally. the science behind 21 days and it's true, mm -hmm. but I like the mindset of it takes one day. It's the day you start and the day you don't quit. Right. Mm, I agree. The difference is the person that has the discipline and the control over themselves, when they start something, they don't quit it. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so you go through it 100%. Most people, if you give yourself a directive and an order right now today, you can't follow through with it 100%. So the question then becomes, if I don't control me, who controls me? What has control over me? So the greatest fight that a person is trying to figure out, how do I control myself? Because I'm brilliant, I'm smart as hell, I got all this knowledge, I could be strong as hell, but I don't have control over myself. Mm. But if I could control my own avatar, <clears throat> body, mind, brilliance, the way I speak, communicate, build up my skills, and I can take right. over the world. Yeah. So the war that, the war that most people fighting is the war of self-control. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when a person can't control themselves, they try to manipulate others. Right. You understand me? They want other people to do what they can't do for themselves. It's like, no, nah, my whole war... I ain't never been to war with nobody greater than myself because all of this shit is internal. Because I know, like we talk about that, that mind equal potential awareness transformation. Once you become aware of your potential, you understand me? You now are responsible for, are you going to live it out? Right. Now, when a person knows that, you imagine right now, you can imagine, what's the greatest version of myself? I mean, like, just, just go crazy in your own imagination. Yeah. He balling he out, like? got money, you got, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Swole, you like, got a helicopter, you know, you got like everything. Suit you got on. You know, morally uh -huh. defined, disciplined, focused, like, bruh, it's different. Yeah. If you can see it, that means it's power. That means that that's a real potential. Whatever you just seen in your head. Right. Now you got a responsibility of saying that, damn, will I become that person? Will I stay who I am? Maybe I reach 50% of that vision, right? Right. But then there are some people, they're not happy with life until they become 100% of that. And when they become that person, that person has another vision, right? So they just keep breaking shells, keep breaking Break shells. shells. Yeah. You seen Jay-Z when he was, you know, a drug dealer. Then you see Jay-Z when he got with Beyonce. Then you see Jay-Z, he got the Bosque out. Mm -hmm. He's are, are going through different iterations mm -hmm. of different visions that he see for himself. Right. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to see it or like it. But when a person has a vision for themselves about their potential, mm -hmm. They go through that journey of transformation. If you follow that, it's the coldest formula of life. I'd like to build with you for a second, I, I, brother. I, I, oh, oh, yeah, go, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I got a vision too. He <laughs> went here. I feel like here, I feel like a trip to Turkey is involved in that vision. But I like to keep up. <laughs> I, I like to keep up. Like for me, on my path, on my journey, there's somebody that's always in a room with me. And that's me 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And he has everything that I want. Man, that's mm -hmm. what I say. Looks the way I want to <laughs> movie, talk to people the way I want to talk. And when I'm on, when I'm on my dean, I see him. He's there. He's clapping for me when nobody's looking. And when I know I'm not doing the right things, I don't see him. Mm. And that, that, that makes me panic. So I jump back into whatever habits I need to do. But I constantly keep that character right there. Mm. And I, another thing I wanted to, to add to what you were saying, the avatar. A lot of the times we get stuck on things because of the emotions that we have in it. But if you was playing a game like Champ, if you was playing a game called Champ, and you're holding the, the controller, the problems that come into your life you're not going to have that emotional attachment. You're just going to be like, okay, what I got to do next? All right, mm -hmm. I got to go. No strategy. I got to drive this right, car right. down the road and I got to right. go to work. Gotta, you know, like you'll just carry on without having that attachment. Sometimes you got to detach yourself from your emotions and be like, okay, I have a goal. We're going in this direction. I love this chick, but she's crazy. And she's going <laughs> she's to ruin my day. So yeah. I got I to gotta keep going where I'm going or you know, Pop, I, I love you, but you're bugging out right now, and I got to stay focused. 
And, you know, you read the Bible, sometimes God requires a sacrifice. And it's not always, oh, you got to kill this animal. Or you got to, you know, do this. Sometimes you have to sacrifice people who are holding you back, people who are in your life and they're just distracting you. And you might have a lot of love for this person, mm -hmm. but you know that this person is not going to help you get there. You got to cut that off. You're sacrificing mm -hmm. your old self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything that was attached to it. That dude, that dude isn't here anymore. I'm not the guy I was five years ago. And I think having faith in God is believing that when you make those decisions, no matter how good you think that relationship was, you're going to find a better one. That's mm -hmm. a fact. Agreed. And once you keep that in mind, I think that every day is a whole life. Right. Right? Like, when you go to sleep, that's like a process of rebirth. Because you're never the same because your brain downloads all those experiences. So you change every single day. But now you get to look at yesterday and all of the shit that you did yesterday that that person did, you got to live it today, hmm. right? So like, I mean, I was thinking about this concept because I was up late one night and I was like, if I don't go to sleep, the next day I wake up, I'm going to be tired as hell and it's going to be hard for me to get whatever I need to get done. Mm -hmm. But at that time, because, you know, me right here, I'm still making the decision as this person to stay up because I don't have to live it. Right. right. The version of me tomorrow will have to live the consequences of my decisions today. Right. Now. Right. 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 So it makes it feel easier that you making decisions because you don't feel like you got to live it. Right. Not mm -hmm. knowing that that time will come. Mm -hmm. So you go to sleep and then that version of you wakes up like, man, what you do yesterday? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you only got three hours. Man, sleep. Why am I tired? Yes. Man, he was up again, wasn't he? Right. And every single day you live a whole life like that, going through different versions of yourself. But if you live a life where those previous versions of you stack up making good decisions, when you wake up all of a sudden you got the roly, you look fine, you fly, yeah, you yeah, wait, yeah, and what we got on the business yeah. schedule today, yeah. oh, my yesterdays must have did some right things. Right. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And so you get to make that decision about life at every single moment, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of life. I don't care what happened all your previous yesterdays. That person today gets to decide what happens tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bigger one to say. Um, several things I wanted to say. So, uh, all right, I'll start out with this one. Um, God to you, is there a God beyond yourself? I believe there's the creator. There's a lie. You know, I am a attachment. I come from the source. You understand me? I believe in that inner God. You know, a lie is all in all. You know, but for me, it's my connection to God that makes me a God, right? Mm. It, it, it would be vanity to say that I'm big G-O-D. I don't know how all this was created, you know? But I do know I had to come from source because I have some of them same powers as source, right. right? That ability to source things from my mind and bring it out. So for me, that's God. And I always tell people the way you can prove you God is you can take something out your mind and bring it in reality. You understand me? And so. For me, a lie is God, but that's those attributes. That's that all in all. You understand me? But for me, no, nah, I'm not the God. I am a God. You know what I'm saying? I'm just my father's child. Good. I wanted to hear that answer. So it's for clearance, for me, you know, and probably for the world. Yes, sir. You know, definitely clearance. So being that you don't, that you feel that there is a supreme creator, where does he play in this whole factor when? we talk about these decision makers because i hear everybody in the room or talking about this control stuff and where does he where does god play a role at because if we are having self-control where's god you know you look at the definition of muslim it's one who submits his will to do the will of god the will of allah yes so let's say in that, that God is good, right? When a man does good will, he's doing God's will, right? He's in the flow of the decisions that God essentially wants him to make, right? Mm -hmm. But God gave that man free will to decide whether he's going to do good will or what he's going to do his will. You understand me? It's like that whole Alistair Crowley, do as thy will, right? That's man becoming, right? The devil. <coughs> he's no longer in alignment with God. That means right. he can do whatever he wants to, unconsequential. There's nothing to check him. 
right? There's no judgment inside him. He doesn't have like a man that follows God has judgment day every day. You understand me? Like the judgment that you get from society ain't the one that matters. It's the one that you cast on self. So for me, if I do something that is not aligned with my Godhead, my God self, I'm going to get inflicted punishment. And that's God letting me know that's not my will. That's yours. You understand mm -hmm. me? And so for me, being a person that does good, that's when you follow in God. Everybody has a certain moral compass. Don't ever miss Louis Farquhar and get a breakdown. He say, children do yeah, they dirt in the dark before they even know. But they have an innate immoral compass to know. So they start playing with sex. They're not going to do that in front of the adults. Right? They're going right. to do it in the dark where nobody can see it. Because right. you already know that's not God's will. Right. So we have a moral compass as a child that we stray away from or we stay with. It's like a compass. Like, no, I'm literally going to keep following this or I'm going to go left. I'm going to go to the east. So if you develop consistently and you can always fall off the path and get back on the path. That's the right. beauty of life. Right. right. But some people stray so far away, they just get lost and their compass is broke. Right. And so for me, it's always aligning my decisions with God's will, because I think the word sin in Hebrew means off target. So when you're not connected to your nature as a righteous human being to make good decisions and to do good. So when we talk about capitalism. If a man makes decisions and he knows that those decisions are not for the good of his brother or sis or humanity, he know that ain't God will. But the devil will tell you nice things and God will tell you harsh things. You understand me? God will be like, bro, if you do that, it's a punishment. Devil, man, do what you want to do. So who he going to listen to? And his weakness, he going to listen to the devil because he can do whatever he wants to. But if you follow God, then he's on that path. And that's the one he get invested in. That's the one that's going to last the longest. He's not going to hate himself at the end of his decisions. Right. So there's possible for, because this is things I wrestle with, with my higher yes, understanding. So we can have a will and do what we want to do, but there's a God that created us. Mm -hmm. And by that, that would mean we are going against God's will, is that even possible? Like your parents, they make you, right? Mm -hmm. Your parents can give you your rules, orders. This is how I grew you up. You understand? This is how I groomed you. I want you to follow the family business. This is what we do. We revolutionaries, right? We fight for black people. We activists. We on the side of fighting against the system and oppression. Child somewhere along the way decides that that ain't what I want to do. I want to be in the streets. Fuck these niggas. I'm done with this. Right? right? They no longer follow their parents' will, but we know that their parents made them. But their parents also have no control over what they do with their mind. You understand? They can only give them the tools to make that decision to decide who they want to be. You're right? speaking about God, though. Right. Right. In that analogy, the parent is God. Right. But we're but, speaking about God. Who right. Knows and God all is our parents before it happens. Right. Who, you know, is. That, you know, he's omnipresent. Yes, he has every, I, you know, he knows everything. So how could something go against his will? See, it depends on your definition and your idea of God. The omnipresence of God is different. So I believe man is God. Man mm -hmm. has the ability to make his own decision because man is his own God. Right? So let me rewind the first question. Is there a God outside of man? In the sense that we came from the source that made man. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's a God outside of man. I think the easiest way to understand it is saying that. Outside of the physical flesh that we are putting our eyes on. Is there a supreme power that is in control of Yes. The there's flesh a divine. I believe there's a divine created. mathematical intelligence that's over the universe. God okay. is mathematical in all things that he do. And that's what I was saying. So it's important. Is so what you just said, someone could go against that guy's will, but they're cycles. You know, the beauty about reality is we live our little blimps of life, right? And, and we specs on the destiny of the world, mm -hmm. right? What we do can still be in flow with God's will, right? It's like an immune system heating up, right? This is part of the process to make you healthier. This is part of the process of cleansing the earth. This is part of the process where man is taking man. 
because we are one long collective consciousness. Right. What we study the most in the world is the past, right? The books that come from the past, the lessons that come from the past. So we are a bit mind, a human organism, learning off those decisions, right? Mm -hmm. The greatest lesson for the world over the past thousand years was black American slavery. And look what those people did afterwards. The world would not be there if it was for not. Because as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, we learn what was inside us, right? Mm -hmm. When we see what somebody else does, we know what the capability of man is. We know what we don't want to do. Right. So imagine we now go into the future and it gets to a point where we've learned the lessons, but we had to go through them in order to get that. So God may not be looking at, and I'm talking about, you know, the, 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 the God of all things and how they all connect. You understand me intangibly? I'm not looking at individual existence, right? Looking at the collective existence of human beings, right? And so when we individualize the importance of our life, the ego becomes God, like everything revolves around me. No, you are part of everything revolving. Right. So do you think that he knows you on a personal level? I believe that you are the person that knows self. Like, you no, know, the supreme power that you were speaking about, does he know 19 keys on a personal level or does he just know us all as one person, as you said, because he doesn't personalize? Well, I think it's both, but I can't speak for God because I'm not him. All right. Do you are you familiar with the scripture that says that all things work for the will of the Lord? Yes. All right. How would you see that? Being it's the same what way. I, the same way I just explained it. It's yeah. all our cycles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know with that, going back, where would our decision making process come in at? Because that's what you were saying earlier that we're battling to control self mm -hmm. and. You said the majority of the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when no, I hear that, question. that clicks into me. That's why the majority of the world is in sin, because they are trying to control self. According to the scripture, that's the mistake. You are supposed to let the Lord control you. Mm -hmm. We was talking earlier about we all have purposes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we all have our own ideology, how we see it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we this is a barbershop conversation. I'm going to talk yes, on. Mm -hmm. You know, now going back to the scriptures, it says that we all, you were saying that we all have our purpose. Right. What is that purpose? And everybody's sitting here trying to figure out the purpose, but then you're trying to figure out your own individual purpose. And that is not what your purpose is. Your purpose was to be a vessel. And that's obvious. Right. You know what I'm saying? This here is a vessel for the spiritual body for the, this your physical body is a vessel for the spirit and the spirit is the god that you're talking about that we're connected to so when we try to have self-control the scripture says you will not have self-control because you were created so what happens is when you fight for the self-control you're going to be controlled by one of the other it right. says that you will be controlled by satan or you will be controlled by God. Right. But you will never have the full control. And one of those things I will give y'all an example of so y'all can all think. If we had this control, did something bad ever happen to you? Did you ever, you got, have you ever made a decision that you wanted to do something and something bad happened? Multiple times. Why didn't you control it to make it not happen? I don't know. We can't. See, that whole control thing is really an illusion. Right. What is the, it's, it's a part of us that don't change throughout life. My mom sent me this. Like, what is a part of us that don't change? And that's awareness. But the depth of awareness that each man has is of different degree, mm -hmm. right? A part of you always has a, a measurement, a effect on everything you do. Right. The law of cause and effect is the idea of control. If I do this, then this happens. That's why I say it's not the goal, it's the habits. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what most people are trying to do is understand the power of cause and effect. If I go left, where do I end up at? If I say this, if I get angry, it's cause and effect. So the idea of self-control is understanding what is the effect of everything that I do. Right. The decisions that I make on a daily basis. And can I make good decisions so that the effect of all of my causes are good? Right. 
And so the human experience that we go through, the motions, like it was, uh, I went to uh, Shinnecock Nation and I was talking with one of the chiefs over there. They wanted me to come over there and talk to the people. Mm. And he gave me a great, beautiful breakdown. He said, when you're born, you're being formed, right? You know, that, that sperm, it meets the egg, right? That egg goes through that process, it start coming to blood, then you start to become, right, a, a baby, and then that baby comes out. Through each one of those processes, right, you're developing for the next stage, right? First you got the little spinner, then you become the egg. Now you're getting a heart, you're getting limbs. The baby don't know why he's getting these legs, but he gonna know once he get in there, he has an innate intelligence where he start crawling, right? right? Then he see other people, he start walking. So you're developing, but what happens when you're born, right? When you're born, what are you being developed and what are you being uh, um, led to? What is that next stage? It's not flesh anymore. You already went through that full development of flesh, right? right? So he gave a breakdown. He said, this OG told him, he said, he told me I need to become a lawyer. And he was like, a lawyer? He like, you know, we sovereign. Why would I need to do that? Right. He was like, no, it's a spiritual lawyer. You understand me? You have to understand the laws of the universe, right? And so as we develop in this world, it's no longer a physical thing that we go through, but we look at it as flesh, mm -hmm. right? We look at it as avatar. No, you're going through lessons. You're going through trials and tribulation that mm -hmm. is making man. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets passed down in the DNA. That's what gets passed down in the world. We look at not man in his flesh. When we talk about men of the past, we looking at their spirit, the spiritual laws that we learn from him. And the man that learns those spiritual laws now, when he passes, right, he has that balance, right? Like on my scale, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I believe wow. that we go through that development of understanding the spiritual laws of the universe, right. the non-physical, the non-corporeal. And that's when we develop a full life and we live the journey that we were supposed to live while we're alive. And so that's why we struggle and we wrestle with ideas, questions, philosophies, because we're trying to figure out what are the lessons that I need to learn for this next stage of life. And it may not be me physically coming back as a person, but me being entered right into the consciousness of people after me. Right. That's to me is afterlife. Mm. When you individualize, you make yourself so important. You say, damn, what is afterlife? <laughs> it's just what happens after you go home, right? right? People right. that died in the 1910s, this is afterlife. We right. live in it, right? But we get to learn from their decisions. So I believe it's a, it's a beautiful breakdown you gave because it makes people think about that idea of self-control, when you do it with ego, yes, you're going to find yourself not understanding cause and effect. But when you really break it down, what was that law that created that effect that you live that you probably didn't understand? Mm. It was invisible, subconscious. It was unconscious. But God already has laws because the way his universe works. And man don't understand them. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Oh, shit. Yes. You got to clap to put closure to you know, this, this clap. It's all right, cool. It's time to move on, all right? <laughs> now, we're we going to take a break, but, you know, this, you know, intelligence is, is attractive to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we want to find out how attractive that is. Here we go. To the ladies. To the ladies. <laughs> it's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. Just the way you need to surf you heard.